Can I just can I ask something? Why is this never, this approach never taken with the climate change protests? Okay, because it seems really aggressive and it, it's really intimidating actually. It's almost like, and I'm not saying it's your decision to do this, but it's almost like the police as a whole are trying to instigate something. This is really intimidating. And I heard uh, the guy say last week that we're allowed to come out and protest as long as, you know, wear the mask and stay the distancing. Protesting is not unlawful. It's a human right. So doing that and then seeing this really puts the shits up me, you know, I'm like, what the fuck's going to happen next? But you've no comment and I get it because you're working, so it's a really difficult position you're in, I get that. It's a fucking disgrace. How dare you? Compare the pair. So you had this BLM protest on Saturday the 6th of June. There were at least 70 active cases in Victoria at the time. Nobody got fined on the day. Some of the organisers were fined later on, $1,600 each. Protesters vented their anger at police, but no arrests were made. A stage was set up at Parliament House for speeches and performance art. Victoria Police then gave the crowd who marched under the All Cops or Bastards banner, an escort to Federation Square, and they stopped all the traffic for them on the way. What sort of people go around chanting All Cops or Bastards? People who lack moral principles, who are either too greedy or too uh, suffer from self-importance. Uh, they feel that uh, they, they matter a lot. Police in Ballarat even got on their knees in reverence to the mob. And what was the media and police response? We didn't want to inflame the situation. And we're very pleased with the behaviour of the protesters. I'm telling you, if you treated these protesters the same way you treated the SAC Dan Andrews protesters, then they wouldn't have been so well behaved. So compare all that to the SAC Dan Andrews protest on the 3rd of November. There were 38 active cases at the time, zero new cases that day. Over 400 protesters were issued fines on the day. $1,600 each. Some of them got charged more than that, I believe. Instead of chanting all cops are bastards, people were trying to actually talk to the police. The police quickly surrounded everyone and then closed in so there was no chance of following their distancing rules. So you had the BLM protest where they surrounded the police and then you had this event where the police surrounded the protesters. I didn't see any cops running away in fear of this virus, so it really makes me wonder how deadly it is. Some of the police seemed a bit thirsty for violence, especially the ones in the unique uniforms. And so what was said in the media? Most of them all led with this story about a cop getting a broken arm. I didn't see this incident, but I can imagine that when they're storming into a crowd like that and grabbing random people, that occasionally the whole group might fall to the ground and whoever's at the bottom of that pile is going to get hurt. The police statement for the day, we will not hesitate to find those who clearly and blatantly breach the CHO directions. Remember what they said for BLM, they didn't want to inflame the situation. What about the eye gouging? I suppose it's alright if you've got surgical gloves on. Compare the pair. Bonus round. There was an Extinction Rebellion protest in Melbourne on the 14th of September 2019. And for what it's worth, I agree with some of what they have to say. I was heading down St Kilda Road on a tram to get some work shirts from Meyer. I didn't know there was a protest going on. The tram gets stopped just before the bridge and we're all ordered off by the police. I approach the bridge and it's been sealed off with police tape. It appears as though a crowd is forming on the bridge with more people joining from the north end. The police are stopping people from entering so I engage them for a chat. Can I not just go through? I'm just trying to go shopping. Nope, just go down the footbridge and cross there. Can't you just move these people? Let them protest, but get them to move off the bridge. We're waiting for a plan and a backup, then they'll all be arrested. I don't believe for a second you're going to arrest them all. What happens if I go under that barrier and cross the bridge? You'll be arrested. I bet if I come back tomorrow and hold my own protest, blocking the trams, 
then I'll be dragged off by you lot in no time. I'm then told to move on, or I'll be arrested for breach of the peace. So I walk around, went the long way, which wasn't really that bad, but by now I'm curious as to what the hell's going on. So I come up the stairs at the station and into the crowd that are cheering on the protesters. I start making small talk with some of them, complimenting them on their stunning and brave performance. Some of them are bragging about having enough funding to have hundreds of people arrested if need be. I've no idea where this funding was coming from. At this point, the shopping trip's been abandoned. I've gone to the pub nearby so I can get a good vantage point to watch this pantomime. For over an hour, the police stood around as the crowd on the bridge got larger. Drums got banged and bags of goon wine got passed around the crowd. Then they held a fancy dress competition, won by these well-adjusted ladies. Once the police decided they were going to take action, they started by approaching the front line of protesters and asking them if they would leave the bridge. The brave protesters screamed no, making sure to put on their warrior face for their mates in the support crowd who were taking photos for social media. After the first warning to leave, groups of several police would approach a single protester, ask them again if they would leave, and would then enter into a long, soft discussion with them that I can only guess went along the lines of Hello there, I am Officer Bob, and I've asked you nicely several times if you would leave the bridge. What's going to happen now is that I will take your right arm, Officer Jimmy will take your left arm, and Officer Shona and Betty will take your legs. We will then gently take you over to the side for processing. They would then be gently carried to the side. As soon as they were out of sight of the media, the screaming and carrying on would end, the police would pop them back on their feet and it was smiles all round. No handcuffs, there might have been the odd cable tie used. The police even handed some of them a bottle of water because it was a hot day. As you can see here, some of them rolled around on the floor for a bit afterwards as well. In all, only 36 protesters were carried off the bridge and given fines. Quite small fines too. The group were even able to negotiate one of their members being unarrested. I think it was really successful. There were some very good relationships developed between Vic Police and the rebels coming into October 7. This was a real test to see how Vic Police would respond to peaceful rebels. And um, while they did arrest our first police liaison preemptively, uh, we were able to step in there and, and renegotiate those ties and communications. After a certain point, the mass majority of them had decided they didn't want to protest anymore, had probably run out of wine and needed to piss, so they announced this to the police and they were all allowed to leave without being fined. You can see that this was all openly planned online without hindrance from the police. Not like this girl in Ballarat who got arrested at home in her PJs for setting up a Facebook group. This entire saga was incredible to watch. There are about 40 people who have given up their freedom and been arrested for the climate and ecological emergency and come Spring Rebellion there will be many, many more. And I believe you were arrested today as well. I was arrested, yes. What did the police say to you? Um, they said that if I don't get off the bridge then I'm under arrest. Um, there was a lot of chanting going on though so I'm not, you know, maybe I didn't hear them too well. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, and then they, they picked me up and, um, and away we go and uh, gave a no common interview. It's pretty straightforward. It's not stressful at all. They didn't take us to the station. They just processed us right on the spot and then away we go. You can be the biggest BLM Antifa Extinction Warriors fan around and still acknowledge the inconsistency with the police. Why is it that around the world certain protest groups are being treated differently to others? Why are some types of social unrest being encouraged by big businesses and government but other types of protest is being stamped out? sitting down the road, ready to be arrested, ready to give up their freedom to try and share with you just how important this issue is. Some think that they are in possession of radical political opinions. How, how radical is your opinion 
when the cops and the National Guard are kneeling and doing the Macarena, dancing with protesters, and every major corporation has put out a message and donated money to this cause. I've noticed since that the government, that the policing has got a lot more aggressive, not towards things like Black Lives Matter. Extinction Rebellion closed down areas of London for days at a time. They, they, they um, closed down a, a bridge, didn't they? And, and, and one of the policemen sort of showed how down he was with the Extinction Rebellion uh, protesters by showing his skateboarding skills. Uh, it's, a, it's a tactical decision. It's not, like, it's not like the cops and the National Guard couldn't crack down on this if they, if they wanted to. It's that it's being allowed to happen. How do you explain these double standards? The government does not want its authority challenged on the subject of these draconian lockdowns, which does make you wonder, I mean, and it's a question we should all be asking every day, why are they doing this? I don't know specifically what it is that um, the shadow cabal is trying to achieve.